Hey guys, for today's project we're going to build an incredibly simple, just quick and easy bed frame. Let's get right into it. Jointing, planing, rough lumber becomes dimensioned lumber. Moving on. I only had one cherry board that started out long enough for the side rails, so I had to fabricate a second one. I matched a long and short board up that would get me to the length I needed, then drilled staggered pocket holes in the ends of both boards. I worked some glue into the end grain, then lined the edges of the boards up before clamping them to the flattest corner of my workbench to keep them flush. With the boards locked down like this, I could keep them from shifting while I ran in pocket hole screws. Then I removed the clamps and wiped away the glue that squeezed out. This ends up being a stronger joint than you would expect, and when we add some cleats later, it'll be even more so. After the glue dried, I made one very shallow pass over the joiner to perfect one edge, then sent it through the planer, again at a very shallow depth, to make the faces perfect. Now that all my materials are long enough, I went over to the table saw and cut my legs out of some thicker stock and ripped the side rails to their final width. I pulled up my crosscut sled to get both side rails, both end rails, and all four legs to their final length. The shorter head and foot rails get pocket holes drilled into the ends and then they're attached to the legs. Again, I'm clamping everything down to my bench so nothing shifts during this process. I have a strip of quarter inch plywood on the bench to space the rail up from the face of the leg. Then I have a scrap block holding the rail down so I can access my holes without running into the clamp heads. I found that pre-drilling through the pocket holes and into the mating material helps keep unwanted splitting from happening. In these thick legs, it's not likely an issue, but better safe than sorry. Small support cleats are added halfway between the legs along the bottom edge of the front and rear rails. These will hold up the ends of a central spine that'll span the entire length of the mattress later on. I attached them with glue and brad nails at first, and then I added screws for extra strength. To attach the bed rail brackets, I first pulled the screws out and then put them back together with washers in between the two halves. This creates just enough of a gap so that we can get things nice and tight when we assemble the bed later on. With the head or foot rail standing on end and the side rail butted up against it, everything is clamped down and the hardware is set in position. I pre-drilled into the side rail using a center finding drill bit, then attached the hardware by driving in the screws. Then I marked the exact location of the hardware on the leg before separating the two halves. I laid the head and footboards down flat, then lined the bracket back up with my marks and attached it the same as before. With the washers now removed, I could slide the leg side into the hook side and tighten the screws for a solid fit. Cleats are added on the inside of the side rails flush with the bottom using glue then brad nails to hold them in place, followed by screws to add strength. If you haven't figured out by now, you should be using hardware that's short enough to prevent it from passing all the way through your materials. To span from cleat to cleat and hold the bed up in the frame, I needed a bunch of slats which I cut from a sheet of plywood. I also needed a long board to act as the central spine which spans the length of the bed from headboard to footboard. It also has two short legs that touch the ground which adds the most support. Of course, I made this completely hidden component out of unnecessary walnut, and extra of course, I misplaced the footage of making it. But don't worry, you'll see it in the finished project. For a finish, I rubbed Odie's oil onto all of the surfaces. Now I know this isn't the ideal project for Odie's oil, but I had just picked up my first jar of it, then in the process of battening down the hatches for a big windstorm, I knocked it off of a shelf and shattered the glass jar. I salvaged as much as I could off the dirty shop floor, and I just wanted to use it up to put that bad memory behind me. Then of course, I cut my finger on a small piece of glass that was mixed into it and added some sweet blood streaks to the finish. I moved all the finished parts over to my parents' house, moved their bed out of their room, and started the assembly in its place. The legs and side rails go together just like we saw before. Just slide the hooks over the bolts, then when all four pieces are together, tighten them down enough to pull the rails snugly against the legs. Next, put the center spine in place between the headboard and footboard. See, I told you you'd get a good enough look at it. Then space out all the slats perpendicularly across all three supports. Throw the mattress back on top, then it's ready for some sleeping. So if any of you have a pretty discerning eye, you might have noticed something a little bit funny about the legs in that project. Uh, you might have even noticed that the ones at the end were not the same as the ones you saw the close-up of when I was putting the hardware together. Uh, the reason for that was I was making this thing up as I went along. And the hardware ended up needing an extra eighth of an inch of material over the size of the leg that I initially cut. So I ended up gluing on a block to the inside to try to make up for that. Then I made another measuring mistake later on, so I just cut all new legs. So, 
I didn't really address it in the project because it wasn't really relevant to how it went together. It's just changed the dimensions of a few things. That being said, I do have a set of very simple plans. It's almost more of a diagram because there's not a lot to know. You just really need to know the dimensions of this thing. It is correct in there. It is the dimension of the final leg, the way that it went together, the way that it works and looks clean. So if you caught that and you wanted to yell at me, uh, I knew that and here we are. I've got it covered. If you want to build a simple little bed frame, I've got a set of plans available like I mentioned. Go ahead, find the link down in the description. Go to my website, buy the plans, build your own. I don't know what else to say. I always uh, have a really hard time with this uh, signing off sort of thing. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll talk at you again soon. Yeah. Yeah, I think that went well.